Hey, what's going on Guardians? My name is The Black Link and we are officially one day away from the release of Destiny 2 Expansion 2 Warmind. And in classic form, Bungie has released their final Warmind launch trailer to get you all hyped up and ready for the content that we're going to be getting tomorrow. And it shows off some pretty cool stuff. We get some great looks at the escalation protocol some of the bosses will be facing in there the new raid lair, and even some bits of story in there. There's a lot of cool stuff to unpack here, but first, we're going to go ahead and let you watch that trailer in its entirety. weapon in this system is on this planet, and an entire army of Hive is trying to destroy it. This is a war of many fronts, and there's more than one way to fight it. Do you think Rasputin is the answer? It's a broken weapon, too dangerous to be left alone and too unpredictable to wield. Rasputin was not the only thing to awaken on Mars. Get the expansion pass now. Two epic adventures, one great value. So right off the gates, we're getting a really great look at the Escalation Protocol, the new Horde mode coming in Warmind, where you'll be taking on seven waves of the Frozen variants of the Hive. And we get to see some really interesting stuff here. We get to see a couple of new weapons, including what looks like a new Seraph submachine gun, and some quick looks at some of the bosses we'll be facing, including that giant ogre boss with the white shield who has loads of mini ogres surrounding it. We get to see a huge white knight with a shield, and another Hive boomer-wielding knight who almost looks sort of like the War Priest from back in Kingsfall. Additionally, we get this neat clip of a hunter using double throwing knives, which was previously the exotic ability of the sealed Amkara's Grasp, hinting that those gauntlets, or at least their ability, might be returning in some way in Warmind. After that, we get our first look at the incoming raid lair, the Spire of Stars. Now, this is going to involve fighting Red Legion in what looks to be a Castellum-type area that you'll clear out before you ascend the Spire of Stars. Now, in this section, we also get a couple of looks at some of the incoming exotics with Warmind, including the Polaris Lance, which is that exotic scout rifle that you see Anna Bray using in several of the pictures we've gotten thus far. The Polaris Lance is a solar damage scout rifle that has an interesting ability. After landing four crit shots, it doesn't require consecutive hits, but reloading will reset your progress, so you will need to hit four crit shots without reloading. The fifth crit that you land will deal a delayed explosive blast. Meaning the weapon is running a perk that's similar to the Zen Meteor back in Destiny 1. Where with that sniper rifle, getting rapid kills would load an extra round that caused a massive explosion. With the lance, you'll need to land four crit shots, and then the fifth crit shot you hit before you reload is going to have that increased damage. It's definitely an interesting ability for a scout rifle, and we got to see some really great gameplay of it over on PlayStation's official YouTube channel. They got a chance to go through the new Sony-exclusive Insight Terminus Strike where you'll be taking on a mixture of Cabal and Vex on Nessus before taking out a Scion boss. 
We'll talk a bit more about that later. Moving on with the trailer we got here, another weapon we got to see was an all new exotic sword called the World Line Zero. This looks to be an arc exotic sword with a Dark Drinker-esque attack that kind of teleports you forward with a little bit of a blink. Yeah, Spin to Win is back and so are exotic swords. Well, at least one of them, but they brought the one with the biggest damage attack. Now, another thing that's really cool about the World Line Zero is its attack pattern. It's got the usual slashes, but it seems to also have that high damage uppercut as well as the teleporting spin to win. That's actually something that's kind of unique amongst the swords that are available right now in Destiny 2, and I'm really glad we're finally getting some exotic blades in the game. I'm still waiting for the day that they port over the bolt caster's ability of having a sword shoot beams. Anyways, moving on, we also get to see a quick clip of a warlock utilizing the newly upgraded Claws of Amkara. These were the exotic gauntlets back in Destiny 1 that gave you double melee charge, and they've gotten quite the visual upgrade here. Additionally, we also get a bit more focus on the Huckleberry Exotic Submachine Gun. This is a really awesome weapon. We've talked about it in some previous videos, but if you're unaware, the Huckleberry's got a very unique ability. Its exotic perk grants it increased rate of fire and recoil while the trigger is held. So the longer you're holding that fire button, the faster it shoots. And kills with the weapon will reload a portion of the magazine. Successful melee hits will reload the magazine and start a 10 second timer. And melee kills will continually extend that timer. And while that timer is active, the weapon is going to gain increased rate of fire, more damage, and improved overall stats. That's a pretty insane ability for a submachine gun, and it's definitely going to reward active close quarters play. Moving on from there, we get our first looks at some big story stuff. We get this awesome cutscene coming down onto Mars alongside a group of falling warsats. And from there, we get some great looks at some of the new frozen hive enemies, some of the interior areas of Rasputin's bunker, and a few neat shots of the big man Nocris himself. Of course, we know Nocris is going to be a boss in one of the upcoming story strikes. But he's not the only big bad we get another look at in this trailer. As of course we get another shot of the gigantic worm god that has been inhabiting Mars. We get this awesome shot of it rising up from the darkness in front of the war mine bunker. Before then getting another shot of it tearing the entire place apart. Now this of course wraps up right with some of the things that we heard in previous interviews with some of the employees over there at Vicarious Visions, who of course developed the PC port for Destiny 2 and have helped to develop Warmind. They talked a bit about how they wanted to have some kind of giant encounter, some giant progressive encounter throughout the story that leads into a gigantic boss fight towards the end. And with this gigantic worm dragon beast, if it's Zol, and I'm pretty sure it is, it's looking like it's going to create quite the encounter once we get into the story. But all right, that pretty much covers the War Mine trailer we got today. Now, there were a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. First off, we've got confirmation that Bungie is going to continue creating strike-specific gear moving forward, including for the strikes in War Mine. This came as a very simple confirmation from community manager DMG on Twitter. And truthfully, it isn't anything that's really surprising. I think the response to most of the strike-specific gear we've gotten thus far in Destiny 2, uh, mostly within the past couple of uh, months, has, has been good. You know, I enjoy the DFA, I enjoy the grind for Silicon Aroma and all that kind of stuff. I would love to see it expanded upon, and I'm glad that they're doing that as they move forward. There was a question of whether or not the PlayStation exclusive strike the Insight Terminus was going to get some exclusive gear. We haven't gotten any confirmation on that, but the previous PlayStation exclusive strike, the Lake of Shadows, did not get any exclusive rewards. So that might not be a thing for the upcoming PlayStation exclusive. But speaking of, let's talk a bit about the Insight Terminus. So according to the description for this strike, players are going to be assisting Commander Zavala in breaking into a Vex tomb that's been recently overrun by Cabal forces led by a powerful Scion Commander. And we've gotten some awesome screenshots of this, plus a full gameplay, again, from the PlayStation official YouTube channel. They got a chance to go through the entirety of the strike. And at the end, we get this really awesome kind of Scion Flayer boss. He's got the old Scion Flayer's mantles that you used to get from those bosses back in D1. But overall, it looks like it's a really interesting strike, but it's not the only PlayStation exclusive content that's coming with Warmind. Of course, PlayStation users are also going to be getting their own exclusive legendary set of armor for Titans, Hunters, and Warlocks. Now, as usual, this gear likely won't have anything special about it perk-wise. It's just going to be a unique glamour set that PlayStation users are going to have access to. 
But alright Guardians, that is it. We got to see some really interesting stuff in that Warmind trailer today. And it certainly got me hyped for the official release tomorrow. Make sure you stay tuned right here on the channel. We're going to be putting out coverage basically the minute Warmind goes live. We'll be holding live streams, making video guides, all that good stuff. But alright, it's going to be it for this one. Be sure to leave us your thoughts on all of this stuff down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 news. But that's it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.